Angels simply work for him to minister and serve his people. And he says something here remarkable. It says, they're sent out to serve for the sake of those, and in the Greek it goes, who are about to inherit salvation. It's a Greek about. Now, I take that two ways. I used to always take it, uh, they're about to be saved initially. And it's probably broader than that. Salvation, how many are you, how many are completely saved here? No, you're not. You don't have a glorified body yet. You got something else coming. Ah, I love it. Good, good. You're two-thirds saved. You're saved from the past. You're being saved. But guess what, honey? You're not going to be spending eternity in that wreck of a body of yours. You got the third installment coming, and he's sending angels to wait on you in the meantime. And I take it all the way back. His elect, you know, God does know who he's going to save, right? I think they even ministered to us before we ever got saved. How many nights were there in your life you should have never made it home? I think of my brother and I being in Long Beach. I always think about I nearly drowned there with him and my cousins. Basically drowning, they wouldn't help me. Uh, they couldn't hear my screams. I was freezing in the air. I was yelling for help. They couldn't hear, hear me. And I said, God, I'll serve you if you'll spare my life. And I did for three days. <laughs> How many ever had any of those experiences? I had some idiot one time said, let's go play chicken on damn road. When they first put in the damn road, there was a good strip there. So let's play. And I'm the passenger. I can't even drive, but I'm an idiot. Yeah, let's go. Let's go see if we kill ourselves. Uh, man, I'm glad we got home. I remember one time when living in San Pablo, uh, a guy came to the door and I stepped out to see him and he puts a gun in my side and said, let's go do some stealing. Well, wow, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, uh, I was scared to death of the guy without a gun. He was tough, way over my head. But then when he put a gun into me, I'm going to go basically wherever he wants. But you know, of all things, my dad... Right, he read his Bible over at the uh, table after the dishes were done. He he do his night study there and read the Word. And out of nowhere, I'm there. I, I'm stuck with this hood that is bad trouble. I want you to go with me and just to help you get in the mood. I'm gonna put a gun into you. And, and uh, I said, Wow, you know, I'm, what, uh, yeah, okay. But all of a sudden, my father just. Uh, for some reason, he opened the door, and, and he said, uh, hello, young man. And the guy put away the gun, whatever, didn't see it. And uh, uh, Dad, uh, let's say Gary. Gary and I, he wants, we want to go out and do this. He looked at this guy and said, you ain't going anywhere with this hood. Now, that was a day when the dad was in charge, even of the hoods. I wanted to kiss him. <laughs> he just saved my life, as far as I was concerned. Angels were watching over you before you ever got saved or you would have already died. They've been watching over you, watching over you. A wonderful family story we love to tell. My dad was an iron worker and up on a project. I don't know how many boats of electricity going. Supposed to have been cut off. Everybody's watching the job. And uh, Mr. Biggie, everybody's guarantee, all these guarantees. And my father's up there. I don't know how many feet he was in the air. Uh, throws this uh, steel cable over. Uh, he hits these live lines. The sparks flies, burns the choker in two, and everybody on the ground's waiting for my father to fall. Enough electricity went through to roast him and to kill him. And they'd put up all these gear. Oh, it's locked. It's turned off. It's this and that. When all the sparks cleared, and the man should be staggering, My dad just raised his hand and did this all day, all night, 
angels watching over me, my Lord. I said all day, all night, angels watching over me. They didn't do a funeral for LJ that day. God had an angel on the job. Angels are out there. You don't know how much God is telling them to do for you. Aren't you Mr. Magoo getting through life? You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Boom, bumping. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get there and say, oh, he's a genius. No, he's not. He's got God taking care of him with all these ministering spirits. We are being cared for by the sovereign on the throne and he's dispatching angels to watch over his people. They're not completely saved yet, but it's coming, honey. It's coming and he's watching over us in the meantime. That's what he says. Well, it's too good and I'm too late. Stand up. Let's...